Welcome back to Plus Politics. Now we move over to Edo State. And as with only 17 days left to the September 19 much awaited Edo gubernatorial election, it is more battle of words as the PDP is lambasting the APC over allegations that the Akwaibon resident electoral commissioner, Mike Guinea, is trying to rig the election in favor of the incumbent PDP. To discuss this, we are now being joined by, I'm sure he's going to join us soon, Yerima Shetima, who is the president of Arewa Youth Consultative Forum. And you might be wondering, what does he have to say about a due election? You will find out. And also joining us in this conversation is a chieftain of PDP <coughs> in Edo State, Mr. Greg Ogiogwa. Good evening, Mr. Greg. How are you doing? How are you guys doing? Yeah, good to have you. Uh, very soon, uh, just to let you know that we'll be joined by uh, Yerima Shetima. Uh, we understand that he has something to say about the allegation against um, the resident electoral commissioner. Uh, as much as, uh, let me also put it on record, that we've tried to speak to the state chairman of um, APC in a state who made this allegation, and he declined to be part of this conversation. According to him, he has said what he needed to say, let Igini uh, clear his own name, and he has no, uh, nothing more to say, that we should stay with whatever he has said. So just to put it on right perspective. Now to you, Greg, what do you make out of this allegation? Uh, like they say, is there any smoke without fire? Or is there any fire without oh. smoke? <laughs> First, uh, you just made uh, a foundational statement. You called David e. Moise, Colonel David e. Moise, the chairman of the APC in Edo State. Colonel David e. Moise, not the chairman of APC in Edo State. By law, the first Anselmo Jesua. Because in November last year, we purportedly removed Anselmo a state working committee. Yeah, I, I, I want to believe that the TV is not on. Can you please uh, put up the TV or put it on mute so that we can hear you? There is a kind of uh, interference, and that is distorting your flow. Is that better? Okay. You see, in November of 2019, when... Um, when uh, uh, let's, uh, okay, Mr. Greg, just give me a few seconds. Just give me a few seconds. Just give me a few seconds. Let's take a they short... They make a error of using what they call the state working, the state working committee, okay, go ahead. which does not have the power to remove an executive member, any executive officer of the power. So first of all, that was wrong. The second part was that the um, process of even the removal of the chairman would have gone from the state to zonal and from zonal to national. And the, the, the chairman had seven days with which to uh, uh, appeal against his removal. The very next day, after the state working committee purportedly held uh, its, uh, its removal, the very next day, the national ratified it, national working committee. So that in itself was unconstitutional. And Samojeza went to court and he got a court order reinstating him and restoring him and re, you know and re, 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 uh, um, positioning the, the whole situation to the status quo ante before the removal so under the law and some is still the chairman of APC as of today in okay state. can we stay on so what what, what uh, Imuse said was chairman of APC it means that the very foundation of what we're discussing is wrong David Imoise is not the chairman of APC. Okay, Mr. Of Greg, can I... ...the case in court against him for contempt, but described by Arthur Mojezo against David Imoise... Mr. Greg... ...for himself as chairman. When he went and opened an office somewhere else, a, 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 what they call an... Mr. Gyogwa, please, excuse me. Let me interject here. Let me interject here. Let me interject here, sir. Uh, I understand yes, that you're a party man. I understand your grouse. But please, may I also inform you that crowd. as journalists, no sorry, sir, fact. can I explain myself? Since you're questioning yes, you the way I ask my question, let me explain myself. As journalists, if three of you declare yourself as chairman, 
the best word, maybe the only correction I will put is a factional chairman. So the factional chairman of APC had come out to say that there is a surreptitious move by the incumbent governor to give money to the resident electoral commissioner. And I'm saying that what do you have to say about that? Can we stay on the substance of the issue and not uh, the oh. periphery? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, we can stay on the substance. But you know, one thing is that if your foundation is wrong, then your conclusion will be wrong. By so the very foundation, Imoisi is not even a factional chairman of APC. He is the chairman of EPM, Edo People's Movement, or whatever they call it. The courts have already said that if you don't know who is the chairman, let be guided by the court, be guided by law. It's not my opinion. It's not the opinion. Okay, of can we stay on the allegation now? It is what the court says. It's a court judgment and order. Now, let's go on to the uh, accusation against Mike Guinea. Mike Guinea, um, for people who do not know him or who do not understand the background, Mike Guinea used to be in Edo State as uh, uh, an electoral officer, you know. And at that time, he was accused, he was accused by ACN under Adam Toshomole that he was going to rig the elections for the PDP. Because ACN was the, was the only minority state, was the only, uh, 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 what's it called, opposition state in the South-South. All the other states were PDP. Well, we, we marched, because I was in AP, uh, uh, ACN at that time, we marched to INEC. We barricaded the place, mass protests, that Mike Higini and the uh, INEC were going to rig the elections using federal might. What happened? Oshomole won the elections clean, fair, if, uh, fair and fair. And Mike Guinea, they even offered Mike Guinea a chief party title in Edo State before he left to acquire He was he was celebrated as having delivered a minority state against federal might. All of a sudden, the same people are the ones now turning around and saying that Mike Guinea is going to, to, to he, he's not even the electoral commissioner, resident electoral commissioner for Edo State. What is he going to come and do here? He's in acquire box. What power does he have? What you are seeing. What you are seeing, and then please get this very, very clear. What you are seeing is the APC trying to put down a justificatory apology for losing the election in advance. <laughs> they know they are not going to win this election. They know that. They have done opinion polls, surveys. I challenge them to bring out the results of the opinion polls and surveys that they have done, that we know that we all have done. They can go and check it out. 80% approval rating. They know. And because of that, they are looking for justification they are looking for a justification to lose the election. So they can now say that it was INEC. And that is reprehensible. You do not cast aspersions on the institutions of democracy. You don't cast aspersions on INEC. Don't cast aspersions on the judiciary. Don't cast aspersions on the police or on the military. Because these are institutions of state. Because things are not working well for you right now, you think you Look, Donald Trump is doing it in the US. He's saying that the mail service is not doing this, that the elections will be rigged. Because he believes he will lose. Same thing is happening here. The APC know they are going to lose this election. Have you seen David Emoise introduced as chairman of APC at any of the rallies that uh, the Osage Ezeya is doing? Have you seen him do it? Because he can't. Because there's a, there's a case against him as for contempt of court. So David Emoise is totally irrelevant in this issue. He's okay. just an ordinary member of the APC trying to make himself relevant. The APC knows that they are going to lose this election. So they are beginning to use the threats of violence. They are trying to scare people okay. away from polling, the polling booth. They are trying to use their uh, voter intimidation. Mr. They say they want to use federal Greg. Every Greg, thank you. That they have taken. Uh, you you have really have a few days today because... Because, um, for them, because Buhari is not that way inclined. Okay, Greg. Greg, uh, it's interesting to hear you explain that uh, we should respect the institution. It's quite interesting to see that uh, you seem to be speaking the language of a civilized politician, and we hope that uh, this will be the song at all time. So I was just uh, teasing you the other time that you actually have a field day because uh, APC guys are not here to also have their own take. It's not our fault. We try to speak to them. But talking about allegations and counter-allegations, your party, at different times, I've also accused the institution of being one-sided, of being biased, maybe not now. What do you have to say? I'm talking to you now as a 
representative of the political class. How do we ensure that we allow institutions to do their job? We'll be specific about the institution and the particular allegation. Because, you know, you do know that you have bad eggs within institutions. A bad egg within an institution is not the same thing as an institution. You don't call out an institution and you do not cast aspersions on the institution because there are some bad eggs in it. So let us go to specifics. What are the specifics? You know, Mike Guinea in this particular instance has a sterling reputation. I've never met the guy. I've never met the guy. But I took part in a protest match against him in 20, 2012. 2012, yes, I think it was. Because the, the, the impression was that Edo State was a minority state, and PDP was, was controlled by PD, uh, I mean, uh, Nigeria, the federal government was the PDP-controlled uh, government, and that they were going to use federal might, which is exactly what they have been saying in Edo State, that they're going to use federal might to ensure victory. But it's obvious that that's not working, because just like uh, Goodluck Jonathan did in 2012, we, we allowed the people's mandate, okay. the people's uh, will to... to, to uh, Greg, uh, Greg, I'm so lead. sorry. I know you've been very, very patient with me tonight. But please, uh, let me quickly yes. have uh, Yerima. I think his audio is back now. Okay. If you can hear me, Yerima, quickly, let me have your take on what your issue is against the political class accusing Mike Guinea of collecting money. Okay, it's so sad that uh, we may not be able to take very much tonight. I sincerely hope that uh, some other time you will have time to give your take on this. I can see that you're really struggling to be back. But let me quickly have my, uh, uh, Greg's uh, final statement because time is really not on our side. You were just talking about um, institution. Yeah, continue with your thoughts. Is not Ganduji. We have video evidence. Video evidence of Ganduji collecting dollars. I mean, everybody has seen that. You have seen video evidence of public officials taking money. Do they have video evidence of Mikey Guinea doing anything that is illegal? There's video evidence of Ganduji, who is the chairman of the National uh, Campaign Committee for the APC. Video evidence. Okay. Do they have video? So no and I want to tell you one thing, too. Listen to this. Mikey Guinea is an official is a federal government official. Whatever you say to disparage him or to bring down the institution of INEC, which is a statutorily declared institution of the federal government of Nigeria under the constitution, actually amounts to fake news. And okay. fake news, you know right now, is a criminal offense. So why has David Dimosi not been charged for fake news? You okay, Mr. Greg. Thank you so but much. Let's, let's leave this Charles question. For fake news. Charge him under, under the fake news, the new fake news law. Okay. He has disparaged an institution of the federal government. He has cast suspicions on, on an official of the federal government. That okay. in itself constitutes a criminal offense under the new law. Interesting. Charge him and find him Interesting. Guilty. Interesting perspective, Greg. Interesting perspective, Greg Ogiogwa, our PDP chieftain in Edo State. And we sincerely hope that uh, come September 19, we will have original results and not fake results <laughs> for yeah. your intervention. Yeah, yeah and to well, our viewers, you, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, I'll be giving you my take. Please don't go anywhere. And here's my take on the water resources bill. It still begs the question, why a government will be bent on a matter a large number of its citizens are kicking against? Has the sponsor or sponsors of this bill wonder why a review shouldn't be done or why it was thrown out in the last assembly? Has or have they wondered why moves of this nature are always greeted with distrust and suspicion? In my view, this bill does not have to get to the public hearing state before it is thrown away. I ask again, in whose interest is this bill? Who is supporting this bill? Should please come out and educate us on the rationale behind the bill. If indeed there are genuine environmental concerns, let it come through action of responsible governance and not through act of parliament. 
I'm afraid that is how much we can take on Plus Politics. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time, on the same station. I remain yours truly, Coyote Ladende, saying bye for now.